Welcome, 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 everybody. Come on in and have a seat. My name is Sister Lee Thrower. Been a heck of a weekend. And we're back with another stream. Um, we are into the new week, so we'll be back with The Last of Us Part 2 the following week from this. This is our 100 hundreds week focusing on, currently, Plague Inc. Evolved. But as of right now, I realized uh, earlier today that I completely missed the Ubisoft Forward event. So, we're going to go through, and we're going to go through it in kind of an abbreviated fashion, which I'll get to in a second, but um, good to have everybody here. Mitchell, oh right, you're streaming tonight. Try not to sound so happy. Uh, for everybody that's here, here's how this is going to work. It's the simplest way I can think of to do it. Okay? You with me? You with me? You watching? Watch right... No, don't do that. Watch right here, right in the eyes. We're connected. So, here's what we're going to do. I got a blink. Here's what we're going to do. I have a list right here of all of the things that were revealed. I can't sleep if you're streaming. Well, you can turn the TV off. So the button that says power does you can turn it off um, I have a list here of everything that was revealed during the event and I figure the most abbreviated way I can do this because I don't want to watch a three and a half hour stream um, we are going to look at the list I will read through the list for you guys if there is any game that anybody wants to see, I do not care if you feel like you are the only one that wants to see it. I'm on my phone. I'm not... Oh, well, there's another power button on there, too. Don't worry. Numb nuts. Get you. Why is my camera so high? I feel like it's high. Is that... Yeah, that's better. Um... We'll go through the list... I don't care if you feel like you're the only one that wants to watch it. If anybody out there wants to watch it, if I, if I get even one vote for something, we will find a trailer for it. Hour and a half was pre-show bullshit and post-show was Valhalla gameplay. Okay. Thank you for the warning. I still think I'm going to do this abbreviated version, but I appreciate the heads up anyways. Um... Yeah. So I figure... Oh, there's a four-hour version. Okay. Let's check out the four-hour version, but here's what we'll do. We'll run a Best Buy ad. Sisterly Thrower, not sponsored by Best Buy. But three hours is misleading. I just, I really do want to get to the actual gameplay part of today. Oh, used to be. Okay, right there, the stream doesn't even start for an hour and a half. That's nice they have the timer there, though. I appreciate it. Oh, you guys can't see that. Hold up. If I move this out of the way real quick. Yeah, see, they've got a timer there. That is very thoughtful. Um, let's get to the list. Let's get to the list. Okay, I'm making noise there in that window. Okay, so Ubisoft game announcements and news. First of all, Just Dance 2020. We'll go by groups of three. How's that? Just Dance 2020, Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet, and the crew too. Does anybody have any interest in seeing those trailers? Mitchell, it sounds like you, just from context, it sounds like you um, already saw this. I personally found it to be underwhelming. I was afraid of that. Just Dance 2020, I don't really care about. Uh, according to GameSpot with uh, Chris per Pereira, Jeremy Winslow, and Gabe Gerwin. 
Just Dance 2020 was the first game shown during the pre-show presentation, and it mentioned that six new songs were coming to the game and that a tournament mode was on the way. Virtual Paradise content is out July 23rd. I don't care about Just Dance, so I'm skipping that unless I hear from someone in the next 30... Yes, I did. Okay. Unless I hear from someone in the next 30 seconds. I will give you 30 seconds while I'm reading through these summations. Uh... Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet, Ubisoft gave a brief look at a playable sandbox that was used for the Apple TV show Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. The team at Ubisoft Red Storm initially made a fake game for the show, but ended up making the content actually functional. That's a fascinating development story, but I really don't care. <laughs> eh, do I care? I don't care about the crew 2. Ubisoft Ivory Tower gave an update on the crew 2 during the pre-show. Summer in Hollywood update recently went live and it will include special editions like the beach and neon battle over the next few weeks. There are also special modded events arriving in August. I don't care. I've never played the crew or the crew 2. You know what? We're going to take a look at Mythic Quest. Uh, Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. Yeah, we're going to take a look at that. I just have to find it. Are we sure this isn't the stream? Because this looks like Valhalla gameplay. And this looks like Watch Dogs gameplay. What is this? I have no idea what any of this is. What way? I love how three of us have, like, 21 seconds right now. I know, we're really close. <laughs> uh, hopefully I can get a little bit of a smoother run. Okay, I don't know what this is. Uh, we're skipping this, skipping this. I think I might have missed it. Ah, here we go. I'm seeing it now. Sorry, Paige. Watching the whole freaking thing through may have actually been simpler and more entertaining than watching me do this. Okay. Let's try it from here. I'm like one iota curious about this whole mythic quest thing. If you're a Just Dance fan and want to win some cool swag, head over to the Just Dance website for all the details. I forgot they're French. This segment, we have something a little different than what we usually do. A few years ago, Ubisoft created the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Lab and the Open Innovation Accelerator. This allowed us to create partnerships and synergies with indie studios from across the industry. And since so many industry events were canceled this year, uh, we wanted to showcase several indie projects and teams that Ubisoft has been collaborating with over the past few years. Our first indie showcase is developer Machine and Mensch, who is working on the Curious Expedition 2. Let's hear more from the team behind the game. Hi, my name is Masha and I'm a game designer at Machine Mensch. Machine Mensch is a small and diverse indie game studio with eight wonderful employees based here in Berlin. Our connection with Ubisoft came through a program dedicated on Apple TV Plus. And it's a comedy about making video games called Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. And to keep the show authentic, Ubisoft's Redstorm Studio went above and beyond by creating a playable sandbox for the game that is actually featured in the show. So now let's head behind the scenes for an exclusive look. This is the home of Clancy. Okay. It's very Clancy-esque. Yes. <laughs> I get it. All right. Now I'm starting to understand. Right. I, too, keep all my awards at the front of my office. It's entirely empty. So Mythic Quest 
is uh, Ubisoft's first live action comedy. The whole show is about a team that is developing a super successful MMORPG and it's about, you know, all the all the people within the game development team and their relationships and what they go through in creating one of the world's most successful games. All right. Incredible. Thank you. But are we sure that we're finished when we heard about what was going on? Okay, people. <laughs> I want to see the game. We had requests to do things like make a contagious viral disease in which people bleed out of their eyeballs first, uh, then they bleed out of their anus. Oh, my patience is waning. Oh, this is the crew. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Okay. I haven't heard from anybody else, so let's continue on. If you're just now joining us, I'm reading through a list of the games that were revealed at the Ubisoft event. If anybody, and I don't care even if it's one person, if anybody has any interest in any of the games, we will find you a trailer and we will look at it together. If I don't hear from anybody, I will assume nobody's interested. So, that's the first three. What else do we have? The Division 2? Uh, no. Trials Rising? No. Uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Um... Mostly because I got the game, yeah. I'll uh, I'll take a look at Breakpoint. So let's try to find that. It's the crew. Patience is out the window tonight, apparently. I yeah, I have no patience for this. Duck Hunt is the um the division thing. Sorry, just going through this slowly, so I don't have to go on. That's Trials Rising. I can tell. their upcoming updates, AI teammates are coming to the game. Let's have a look at the trailer. I wanted AI teammates from the, the beginning. AI teammates are back in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Because you're really screwing it up. Solo players, they're going to be a game changer. Available at any point after you have reached Erewhon for the first time, Fury, Fixit, and Vasily can be activated or dismissed at will. And from okay. the beginning, you will be able to fully customize them. Okay. This customization includes all of the physical attributes, as okay. well as gear, equipment, or even full costumes. All right. Your teammates can be tweaked just as much as your main character. Good. Just like Nomad, your teammates will adapt and react to the world of Aroa and its environments. And they will always follow your own behavior. If you decide to go stealth, they will equip silencers and crouch, or go prone when possible. But if you decide to go loud and open fire, they will stick by your side. When deployed, you can issue different orders to your teammates through the order wheel. There are four different orders you can give to your teammates. You can tell them to regroup on your location, to hold their current position, to go to a specific location, and to open fire on nearby enemies. These orders can be given at any time, even through your binoculars and drone. Once they approach potential threats, the teammates will notify you and mark them automatically. Got a hostile. With a good look at your enemies, you will be able to set up a sync shot where each of your teammates picks a target. You can even link it to your three sync shot drones for a simultaneous seven target takedown. The teammates have weapons equipped at all times, a versatile assault rifle to accommodate all situations, and a primary weapon that you will be able to fine tune. Indeed, apart from mark upgrades and passive bonuses, the full gunsmith is accessible to your teammates, and their weapon of choice will have a direct effect on the battleground. Depending on the type of weapon they have equipped, the teammates will adapt their engagement distance and rate of fire. From close distance shotgun wielding, all the way to long distance sniper shots. Of course, if you get taken It's out, not nervous. I, priority will be to I have a point. You. To achieve that, they will first focus their fire on the surrounding enemies before getting to you. And they will expect the same from you, especially as you will be able to carry them to safety if the situation requires it. Finally, the teammates will also be your best allies in any vehicle, especially on the road and during high stake pursuits. The teammates will be available for all solo Ghost Recon Breakpoint players 
on July 15th, and we cannot wait to see your reactions. We'll see you on the battlefield, ghosts. I'm laughing because um, they're making such a big deal about this. Everything that they just described was available in the previous game, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Those pretty much those exact same four orders that you could give to teammates, their behaviors. It sounds like they fine-tuned the weapons a little bit. Like, I don't think Wildlands let you choose what guns to give your teammates. I think it kind of picked for you. But they could come revive you. You had to go revive them. Um, it's just, they're talking like, oh yeah, we did all this cool stuff, and look at us, and we're so awesome. But they basically reskinned the order wheel in the HUD, and that was it. Let me, let me make sure there's nothing else. Hey Ghosts, I'm Grace from the Ghost Recon team. As you've just seen, the AI teammates are finally landing in Ghost Recon Breakpoint with our next major update on July 15th. Alongside the AI teammates, this update comes with a ton of new content, including a gunsmith upgrade, new PvP content, quality of life updates, and more. You will be able to try it all during our next free weekend from July 16th to July 20th. But that's not all, we've got one last thing to show you. Enjoy, and we'll see you on Aroa, Ghosts. To anyone listening, this is Haruhi Ito, speaking for the outcasts. We stand against Sentinel's illegal occupation of Aroa. We call on all of Aroa to join us. Separated, Sentinel wins. But united, we cannot be defeated. Was this DLC or something? Whoa, that flashed way too fast. What was that? Resistance live event? What? I mean, <sighs> and now our very. I shouldn't be too harsh. They're trying. They're trying something new. Good for you. Awesome. Fantastic. More power to you. I'm not hearing from anybody else on any of the other games or more details about anything. So we will continue to Watch Dogs Legion, which I absolutely want to see. Brawlhalla and the Mobile Showcase, which I. Do not care. Hyperscape, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla, and Far Cry 6. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, we're going to be watching Watch Dogs, Legion, Valhalla, and Far Cry 6. Does anybody have anything else to add? Let me know. If not, I'm just going to go. Wait, is this Far Cry 6? Ooh, boy. Anyone else want to try to do better than that? Oh, this is steep. Oh, this is like cool clips. Okay. Never mind. Okay, this this looks promising. Let me back it up just a little bit. Production here at Ubisoft. Watch Dogs Legion. Here we go. I'm a user, but there's no time to waste. So let's head straight for the streets of futuristic London and see what the hackers of DeadSec are getting into. The illegal painting spreading subversive and hostile messaging over the last few weeks across London are not the work of several people, as was originally believed, but the work of an individual. The criminal suspected to have links with the terrorist group against them.
a heck of a jump there. Whoa, whoa, okay. Authorities recommend not to approach the individual. First, they came for the foreigners, and I did not speak out because I was not a foreigner. Oh, I know this poem. A poem? Then they came for the protesters. And I did not speak out. Because I was not a protester. Because I was not a protester. Then they came for the journalists. And I did not speak Oh, they changed this. Okay. Because I was not a journalist. You better be able to do all this stuff, is all I'm gonna say. Is that a female protagonist? Is it like choosable? Longtime creative force here at Ubisoft, and now he's bringing this vision to Watch Dogs Legion. Um, so, yeah, what we just saw was an amazing short film by the director Alberto Mielgo that uh, was inspired by Watch Dogs Legion and looks at, at the game and the universe and the characters through his incredible uh, artistic vision and visual style. The city needs a resistance. Like the film, Watch Dogs Legion tells the story of ordinary heroes setting aside their differences in order to come together as a collective and to fight for a positive change. Is that an MMA ring? You can literally recruit and play anyone who you see in the open world. You profile people that are interesting to you, you help them with their problem, you play their origin mission. Just help me get some closure and I'll do whatever you want. Sounds like a dead sec problem. Leave it to us. And that's how you recruit them into your team. And then they become the heroes of the game and, and the stars of your story. And what are you doing in my flat? You with Albion? Please, think more underground. You with Albion? I'm tickled, but think more underground. What, dead sick? Yeah, right, and I'm Che Guevara. You're done. And they make the story not only, you know, unique to them, but unique to you as the player and, and personal to you because they're, you know, heroes that you've chosen and invested in. What would I say to fans? I guess I'd say, you know, uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe, 
Welcome to the resistance. The amount of ah, London town. A modern metropolis. Built on history and prosperity. Only took 12,000 years to build it up. And one night to tear it all down. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh my god. Listen up. Get all your units to move in and lock down the city. With London under attack by a mysterious terrorist, the government turns to a private military company called Albion to keep everyone safe. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Cass, CEO of Albion. He's kindly stepped up to establish order. Understand this. I will not allow anyone, not even myself, to jeopardize this. He will stop at nothing to permanently control the city. London will be the first city in the world to be made truly safe. Nigel's not the only opportunist who's taken a liking to this fair city. Meet Mary Kelly, head of the most powerful crime syndicate in London. Be sure and spread the word. She and her goons are using the dark web to sell everything from party pills to people. This microchip is scary, I know, but I've got to keep tracks on my merchandise, don't I? You made me a slave. You do not want to ruffle her feathers. With the city out on its ass, it now falls on you to build a resistance and take back London. Any of the brave Londoners you see walking the streets can be recruited into your team. Like him. Her. Or even her. Everyone could become your next secret weapon. In our first mission, we need to get some dirt on Nigel Cass, and that means breaking into Albion headquarters inside the Tower of London. All the hardy souls you see here are people we have recruited from the streets of London. They all have unique abilities, and you're free to tackle this mission with whoever you like. Dear God, my eyes. Badly. Zip up, get to work, and let's never talk about this again. Like everyone in DedSec, Arthur can hack pretty much whatever. But as a construction worker, he has a particular set of tools that make him handy. He can even call his own cargo drone. Perfect for gate crashing, when you're not invited. And who needs a regular old gun when you have a bloody nail gun? Okay. This is the other thing I was worried about. But uh, I'll let it finish. Jesus Christ, what is that thing? Perhaps we could approach this mission differently. If you'd rather keep your distance, we've got you covered. Amy is a drone expert. What have we here? A real tech connoisseur. Hate spiders, but love this one. What an adorable creepy crawler. Here we are. Oh my god, that's horrifying. <laughs> a drone expert does have the unique ability to summon their own drone. This little darling is fast and stealthy. She aims, she fires, she hits. Okay. Reading incoming drones. She can also hack enemy drones, turning the tide in her favor. And if you are not into direct confrontation, there are more ways than one to get the job done. Recruiting an Albion officer like Brielle here might be challenging, but it'll get you inside restricted Albion areas. Don't mind me, just doing recon for a bunch of insurgents. However, do anything suspicious and she'll probably wind up with a bullet in the back of her head. You've been approved. Missing the human element here. I can get the defense minister on the line right now. Well, if you feel you must. Criminal 
criminals running our streets. Illegals threatening our families. The police commissioner himself. Assassinated by terrorists. Well, that seems to be enough evidence. Next up, we're crashing Mary Kelly's organ farming operation and putting a stop to it. That's good. The buyers expect high quality stuff. And we need a hard nut for this. Impairing our frontal lobe again, are we? Bags, don't disturb me in my natural habitat. Say hello to Mickey. The man lives for his team. I put another air on my chest. And doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. He does have a slight drinking problem, though. Oh, Mickey down. He's passed out. Ah, oh, well, we'll come back to him. You know what? Let's go with someone a bit more professional. Ooh. It's almost crass to call him a hitman. I was going to say very hitman-esque. Some might even call him an artist. Responsible. Ah, <sighs> done and dusted. Not bad, not bad if I do say so, innit? Not everyone in London is a legendary assassin or a super spy, but everyone can be a hero. So get out there, find the best recruits, and build your resistance. It's time to take back London. Okay. Plunging the player into a living, breathing city, teeming with unique locales and characters, has always been a central pillar of the Watch Dogs series. So what goes into building those worlds? Here's Amanda Mutt to tell us more. My name's Amanda Munt. I'm a level artist on Watch Dogs Legion at Ubisoft Toronto. Okay. Being a level artist. This part I don't really care about so much. Um, fascinating idea. Looks great in a trailer. For me to even begin to wrap my mind around the programming necessary to be able to do this is just making my brain hurt. Honestly, it... Eh? Light Rage, good to have you here. Eh? Not that crazy about the game? I'm gonna try it so you can just watch me play it here on stream. Um, two big things that I'm worried about. Number one, everybody in the city can be recruited. If I can recruit anybody, I have that natural expectation that I'm gonna get that many different skill sets. If this is just a rotating loop of like the same 10 skill sets, that's gonna kind of suck. And I know there can't actually be like 8 million different skill sets, but it has to be a big enough variety. Excuse me. That, um. That it's compelling, that it's believable. And it kind of a similar point is just like character backgrounds, like a taxi driver, a grandma, a spy, um, a drunk at a bar. Is there like a story with a main character? No. No, there isn't. And I heard a fascinating discourse the other day in a um, podcast I was listening to about how that affects marketing. But uh, the, uh, the story, as I understand, is that London has been attacked by a mysterious terrorist force. Albion security forces have been called in to keep the city safe. 
they're overstepping their bounds, so you have to get rid of them, while also dealing with London's natural criminal element at the same time. So, I don't know, I'm worried, I'm hopeful, but I'm worried. Um, what else is there? Okay, so there's still Valhalla and Far Cry 6. Let's see how quickly we can find... That's Brawlhalla. That's the mobile thing. How many players are remaining? What? What is this? In the hyperscape, the biggest. Oh, hyperscape. Okay, I don't care about this. Vikings, Vikings, show me Vikings. I have a feeling each character has like three skills and there will be like a hundred ish and with like stars like a two star brawler and a four star hacker drone special and it'll be just a amalgamation of Lynn, like four hundred skills. Probably. That's the only reasonable way I could see that work from a programming perspective, but I don't know. We'll have to look. Uh here to create immersive world setting a new bar that continues to drive our industry forward. I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed. I love the time I've spent exploring the world in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I can't wait for you to see the gameplay from Assassin's Creed Valhalla that's coming up now. Oh, this is gameplay, right. okay. We know you've been waiting to hear more about this game since it was announced back in April. And now it's time for a deep dive into the world of Vikings. My name is Julien Laferriere, and I'm the producer of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So a couple of weeks ago, we announced Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and the reaction from the fans was just amazing. The time period of Vikings is was really, it? really inspiring. When we did our research, we found that, you know, there were not mindless barbarians. Vikings were actually farmers trying to find new lands for them to settle. And so they had really human motivation. He blinks so much. So for destroyed. us to have this opportunity to tell kind of the real story about Vikings and kind of separate ourselves from the myths and the folklore. More really gameplay in the post show. That was much better. This game. It is a personal adventure. You know, it is the story of. This all looks like stuff from the trailer. Vikings from Norway, who would lead his or her battle-hardened warriors across the North Sea to the British Isles. Eivor is driven by an ambitious goal to build a thriving Norse settlement in a hostile land. The good of our clan, it is time we go a Viking. Today we raid, and tomorrow we may build. England is a dark age tangle of broken kingdoms and warring dynasties, a land of opportunity and riches. As you prowl England's rivers by longship, you may raid locations you spot from the shoreline. Ground your ship and blow your horn to lead your raiding crew into battle. Oh, you are like raiding, raiding. Okay. I'm seeing a weapon wheel. I'm seeing a similar compass. Revival mechanics. We will assist you in all your raids. Fighting enemies. Battering down doors. And stealing cargo too heavy for one set of arms. Whatever riches and resources you pillage may be used to develop your settlement, giving you access to useful services, better tools, and new settlers. I love that. At the heart of your settlement is the Alliance map. It will serve as a record of the allies you have made, and a guide for future opportunities. Okay. The Viking Age was a time of warriors and legends. In Valhalla, you will find the largest variety of enemies ever assembled in an Assassin's Creed game. Every archetype offers a unique challenge. Some will coordinate with their allies for special attacks while others will use nearby objects to their advantage. 
including the bodies of fallen warriors. Excuse me? <laughs> to face these attacks, you must find and exploit your opponent's weaknesses to gain the upper hand. Take the fight to your foes with a host of brutal new combat abilities. Snare them with a biting harpoon. Pummel them with throwing axes. Incapacitate them with the new stun system to keep them at a distance. Or finish them off. Jewel wield any two weapons you wish to unleash a deadly combination of attacks. Interesting. Customize your fighting style as you see fit and become a legendary Viking warrior. Curb stomp? Looks good, not for me. I will play the bejesus out of this game. combinations of weapons are available to dual wield, including two shields. You can run around with two shields? That's amazing. Oh, his leg and then his head came off. Not all situations call for violence. In this new land, a Viking must find a way to adapt. As Eivor is not welcome in England, you may need to outsmart your enemies, avoiding unwanted attention in towns and bustling cities. Use By making bread? Use and cloak to blend with crowds and slip past watchful eyes, an unseen hunter among the people. From capital cities and villages to the dense forests and rolling hills of England, exploration is vital to keeping yourself sharp. You must feed off the land if you hope to endure. Hunt and forage to replenish your health and fortify your equipment. Uh oh. Search pagan temples and Roman ruins for new activities and challenges to strengthen yourself and your settlement. The more you explore, the more of England's secrets you will reveal. Oh my god, this looks so amazing. But as you push deeper into England, the enemy will push back. In a series of climactic moments, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will feature massive assaults in which you will lead Eivor's army into battle against heavily guarded Saxon fortresses. Today we will reclaim her. Today we fight for your land. And tomorrow we rebuild. For Yeah, it's Assassin's always been in there. Valhalla will transport you to wondrous and haunted lands inspired by Norse myths Cordelia. and England's pagan roots. It will challenge and surprise Thank you, with unforgettable characters, thrilling triumphs, and tragic losses, giving you the chance to live your own Viking saga. They showed his tummy when I stabbed it. This is what Xbox show should have had, at the very least. Ninth century England is truly unlike any. I don't want to listen to you people talk. Wait, what is this? Oh, this is Far Cry 6. I'm not gonna get this. I'm just curious what it's about. Okay, they need to stop with this like interpretive art thing.
I'll tell you right now, this is, uh, someone's taken power that's not supposed to have taken power. You're the only one we can send in, so blow shit up until they try to kill you and then you kill them. God, by the time I have kids, in here. Far Cry 10. I've never seen this in any parenting book. <laughs> It'd be really funny, he's walking behind him and... <laughs> Game over. Child throw a grenade into a crowd of protesters. Even if you want what's best for them, if you only want to save them from themselves. They will hate you, dear. Everything you say, do, believe will be wrong. He's a very famous actor. They will answer you with screams. Call you evil. Are you sure you should be standing out on that ledge? Somebody with a decent aim and a decent gun. I'll give you this. So you tell me. Are you evil? No? Then become one today. Because our country is like this grenade, except it has two basic parts. Our people. And you. And you must clutch them nice and tight, or we all go boom. Okay, not out for a while. I don't really care about the game. Unless they do something drastically different with it, I don't really care. And with that, we're wrapping up our first you Welcome to the Ubisoft Forward post show. My name is Yusuf Nagid, and this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're going to take a deep dive into about 30 minutes of gameplay, and we're joined by a very special guest here. Hey everyone, uh, this is Philippe Algeron, uh, otherwise known as Fizz. I am the quest director on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So, Fizz, we're setting up here for what looks like an epic encounter. Tell us exactly what's going on here. 
Yeah, so here we're midway through the uh, the quest that we're showing um, for you before. Here we're looking at the assault of Bird Castle. Um, so these are big moments that usually uh, sort of culminate at the end of the story. And so here Avar, our Viking raider, is taking a group of raiders and firds into Bird Castle to go and take down Ruid uh, and his clan. Okay. So who exactly is Ruid, and why does Eivor sort of want to pick a fight with him? Basically, Ruid comes into play about halfway through this story arc, where at the beginning of the arc, this is something that, that happens before, Ruid basically caused a lot of turmoil within the territory, and Oswald, who's the sort of elderman to be to inherit this territory, needs your help to take him down. Oswald having just been defeated in a previous quest, and so here this is revenge, okay. but also accomplishing your ultimate goal. So please, as you're talking, job. we're seeing some of the combat of Valhalla. Can you tell us a little bit about the changes to combat this time around? We wanted to uh, basically add a lot of new mechanics to it. So we added like some dual wielding for the player, like a stun system in there. And we really needed to do this to sort of portray that sort of the brutality that comes with being a Viking. The same nature sort of fits into that uh, the time uh, and the character. Okay, this is label is work in progress. I'm pretty happy with this, though. has taken her entire army through the assault and finally it's revealed that our our elderman our ally oswald is still alive and ruid has him captive so this is what it comes to wolfkist two danes fighting over a filthy saxon whore son give me a bow i'll shoot him from here come and get him so now that we've seen that Oswald is alive, we have Ruid within our sights. Uh, what's the next step here? So the next move for Eivor is to finally uh, face off against Ruid. She has her allies. They can take care of the rest of the army. Now it's time to go one-on-one -on -one against Ruid in one of our boss battles, actually. Okay, it seems like a lot of it's a bit of a reskin, but the combat does seem different. And it's worth pointing out, actually, that different. what we're showing is the player... Um, going and facing off against Ruid aggressively, but you, we tend to always have a, to support a 360 degree approach in these things. So the player could have approached us a little bit more stealthy and gotten at least like a good critical hit on either Ruid or his wolf. And so you could play this a little bit more strategically if that's your play style. Interesting. Okay. So we're not only fighting Ruid here, but also his pet wolf, right? Your, one of my preferred strategies is to eliminate the wolf first, just focus fire on him. It takes at least one opponent out of the combat. Now, Ruid will have extra abilities that come into play if you do eliminate his wolf, um, but I think having one opponent less in the battlefield makes for a good strategy uh, in the whole. <laughs> Hey, look, it's me standing back and shooting arrows at him. Tried before God, a lawful assembly. <laughs> All right, so we've defeated Ruid, we freed Oswald. What comes next? Oswald, in this case, prefers for Ruid to be kept alive, and so you basically have to choose: are you going to go against his witches or to stay true to your nature? So we have this choice to make, but before we get into that, I want to rewind a little bit because we just did this big, grand assault, but Eivor couldn't have done it alone. Uh, she clearly had to recruit some folks along the way, get some troops, get some allies. So let's actually rewind and see how we went about first gathering those troops. Right, so when coming up to an assault, it's a game of numbers. Eivor can go into pretty much any location. I'm gonna stop it here primarily because I don't want to take all of the joy and all of the discovery out of it for myself when I play. I'm really happy with what I've seen so far. 
Um, I'm assuming they'll tune it up and make it more graphically, you know, pretty as time goes on. But, um, yeah. I'm happy with it. I think it's... Uh, I think it's what I was hoping for. So, this means... <laughs> you guessed it. Let me, uh... Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Here we go. Have it a da. Ooh, time for anger. <laughs> Pretty much. What do I have an update for? I've had so many Sims updates recently. Oh, we're back! Huh. <sighs> So what do you guys think about the rest of the event? I know I was talking primarily about my thoughts, but you know, what games are you excited for? What are you, uh, what are you angry about? Oh god, there's that music. Let's see what, oh my god. To the world how useful homeopathy is. Wait, no. Where's the one with homeopathy? I can't say I care very much about Ubisoft's games. They show no god and monsters and I said. Literally cannot wait for the rage quit. Nipah virus. Oh, Nipah virus, that's bad. Where is everyone? Oh, here we go. I'm gonna take a guess as to this one just because I want to uh, make sure, you know. I've dropped off at like AC Brotherhood. Brothers Brotherhood was fantastic. Um, let's just start here. Oh god. <laughs> so <laughs> Jim. Do it. So I'm assuming to show the world how useful homeopathy is, I'm guessing what has to happen is I have to get going and then when they start like throwing homeopathy at me, I have to devolve everything and just let them cure me. I'm excited for Valhalla. I uh, don't really care about the rest. Legion is interesting, but I'm not sure if it's interesting enough to get me to purchase. That's fair. Yeah, we're getting into crazy time as far as um, as far as games go. Uh, like we had mentioned earlier when we were chilling, um, Ghost of Tsushima is out soon. Oh wait, I'm not trying to win here, I'm trying to lose. I should, uh, do that. Listen, I wasn't gonna buy that game until the Sony State of Play, but now I am.
Ghost of Tsushima looks awesome. It's just, it's... You know. Streamer problems. No idea what to play. No idea what to play in my own time. I want to play all of these on my own time, but I can't because I'm streaming them. Oh, good lord. The memories and the pain are all flooding back to me now. Uh, da, da, da. Do I have to start killing people first? Is that what the problem is? like Pavlovian anti-serotonin. Just be like me and fill your free time with stressful competitive shooters and wonder why you get angry a lot. Maybe I shouldn't have done casual. Oh wait, they are curing me. Wait, no. Shoot, this is more, um, subtle. Shoot, okay. Um. This is more, a lot more subtle. I thought they were going to throw homeopathy at this first. That's why I got confused. Here, alternative medicines distributed. People are hope placing their hopes on alternative medicines such as ginkgo tree extract, healing crystals, and snake oil. I think now I devolve everything. I'm just taking a guess. This could be completely wrong. I'll devolve all of these, too. That's the name, the kind of plugs you want some white caps reported by Logo to China Eagle. People, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I gotta read this again. Miracle cure destroyed by protesters. Despite everything, the cure for Slim Jim was discovered. However, angry anti-science protesters broke into the labs and destroyed it, massively setting back cure research. Oh my lord. It's more subtle, isn't it? How am I still infecting people? Climate change a joke. Climate change has lost less, but less of its credibility as an influential politician suggested he was a bit chilly and could do with some more global warming.
Fantastic. Cool, they updated it again to reflect real life. Oh yeah, I saw this got an update like a little bit ago. I wasn't even in the right scenario. Let's stick with this achievement, though. It was Nipah virus. Rapid urbanization in India accelerates human encroachment into animal habitats whilst a new strain of the Nipah virus spreads fast through fruit bat colonies. Genetic crossover with other species of the Henipah virus genus could enable enhanced cross-species transmission resulting in a contagion worthy of Hollywood. Could this be the most deadly Nipah outbreak ever? Piercing throbbing. Here we go. Leave the diseases and mutations alone. What would you do if they added more achievements? I would punch myself repeatedly in the face. Oh, this is one that's got like stuff preloaded already. Fantastic. It can infect horses? Again, I would be screaming. Yeah, that's that's not okay if that happens. There are no bats in Saudi Arabia, are there? Well, piercing and throbbing sounds like me when I get a princess. I'm not saying that. Oh no, it can infect dogs. I don't want to have to infect dogs. I was going to say, they have horses. Piercing throbbing, now a danger to humans. <laughs> I'm not reading all the pop-ups. We've had, like, years of me reading these pop-ups. Okay, horse. Oh no, I have to affect the dog. Listen here, Waddle Dee with a gun. I will step on you. Do so at your own risk. Lose a toe. Dog. Heat one, drop one. <sighs> what is cold? Okay, fifteen. Oh, yeah, heat one, drug one. India's working on a cure for piercing throbbing. Oh, dear. 
Okay, so. Wait, how many? 28. Wait for the pop up. Oh dear, I'm not gonna re I'm not gonna uh, read this one out loud. I want y'all to see this. <laughs> Sneezing symptom. Confusion symptom. Missed that because of my microphone. Pulmonary fibrosis. This is getting bad. <sighs> Dyspnea. Fear slows economy. Oh good, now tachycardia. Always love me some tachycardia. Pulmonary edema. Okay, I'm not getting my pop-up. Piercing throbbing film announced. Piercing Throbbing Film currently in production. Ensemble cast of Matt Doman, Kate Slinwit, Lou Jaw, Gwyneth Thropal, Lawrence Bornfish, and Marion Lardicott. Memory loss. UK breakdown. Nausea. Piercing throbbing mutation patterns extraordinary. Dysphagia. Piercing throbbing film fails. Piercing throbbing film about the plague has been cancelled because the actors are incapable. Prevent a film about your plague being made. <laughs> Are incapable of remembering their lines. Completely accidental. Blurred vision. Are there any healthy people left? Okay, yeah, there are. Nuchal rigidity. Hallucinations. because it didn't start Denzaya. Oh god, I'm blanking on the name that all those people were in about the disease. They were all in that movie together about the disease. I can't remember it for the life of me. Projectile vomiting. You know selling that joke makes me sad. 
I can't sell something that's not funny. Oh! Oh no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Was it Contagion? Nuclear explosion in New Zealand. Oops. Literally an incredibly nuanced joke. Sorry, that slapstick gets old sometimes. <laughs> That's not slapstick, but okay. Well, we got one achievement today, which is more than we had than last time. So, I'm okay with this. Germany leading the cloak. Uh, cure. Global cure effort again. God, speech hard, do. Yes, I know it's not slapstick to this point. Slapstick gets old, hence the more cerebral nuance joke. It's okay, you don't have to apologize. Luke can give you some lessons on how to be funny. Mutating too darn fast. Okay, I've been told that happens. Gotta try again. This ride doesn't work with Scapa Bobasi or the other Shiba.
Alright then. I'm trying to think of what else. How's everybody feeling about The Last of Us Part 2? Mitchell read spoilers, so he's not allowed to talk. What do you think? Anybody else who's here? What do you think? I'm trying to think of who else I know has been there. I believe Lavender's been watching. Don't know if you're here or not. Feel free to chime in. Feel the negative side of artificial organs? Shoot, I try. Oh, I'm tired. I too is tired, I got a big day ahead of me, yet I am here. What's your big day tomorrow? Uh, this one says it takes about an hour and I don't really have that amount of time. Alright, yep. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple in here about Stonehenge. Let's see if I can get lucky and shotgun a couple of those. Oopsie. These all tagged is taking so long. Make a celebrity cry?
nothing. <laughs> we'll try and read. Might figure out my next project. Okay, some games. Let me catch up on TV. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, hopefully this one won't take as long. Because i got to get something going. Gonna make a celebrity cry. I know what celebrity it is, at least. I know what it says here is the celebrity. Oopsie, wrong button. Every time I put on metabolic hijack, I always forget. <laughs> Panic click. Oh, get to it. Get to it. Wait, did that say man says his speech is probably the best ever? That's funny. How many? 14 points. Gonna go to sleep. Alright. Hopefully I can get lucky here and grab another one of these achievements. But... So you get a banner message? Harry Pratchett voted best Tom Trevor. I still don't know who that is. Oh, don't involve any symptoms. Stop it. <laughs> Harry burns down. No souls lost. Kim and Don livestream Fortnite from Singapore. Child tells president that injecting disinfectant is not good. Oh wow, this this was a recent update. Pork's not cool, says Ewok. Come on. Upper signs pledged it. Never add zombies into game. I mean, I have not been devolving things. COVID-19 stay inside, save lives. This really is well updated. Sorry, I'm sorry so much, I'm just really tired. Threat level increased.
Sorry, just looking at the uh Let's see, let's get lucky here. Honestly, God, I don't think I did this one very well. I am so tired and my reflexes are so slow. We got one achievement. We talked about the Ubisoft event. That's going to have to be good enough for now. So I'm going to bed. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the show today here. Play Gink Evolved and the Ubisoft Forward event for 2020. Games coming out are going to be good. It's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be playing games. Hope you guys are playing some great games out there. Love to hear about it on the Twitch chat or on any of the social media channels, be it Twitch, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or Discord. Check it out. Make some friends. Have some fun. Because there's always room for more in our Ohana. Our Ohana. But thank you everybody so much for watching. And I will catch you all in the next stream. We're counting this as Sunday, so that'll be Tuesday. Tuesday stream. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Until then, peace out, y'all.